Why are we putting up with mediocre books and reading experiences? I'm Jack, this is Red Book Joy, and I am planning on doing away with boring books and having a winter of bookish excellence. Would you like to join me? So I suppose really this is a chatty video about what I'm planning to do for the rest of the year because a lot of people have been putting up end of year book tags and all sorts of things and um, I just want to talk about something that has been really playing on my mind for a while and I just want to talk about it on here and tell you my plans and what I'm planning on doing. I've had a very difficult reading year and that's been for a number of reasons. I've uh, One of the biggest reasons was losing my friend Alice who was just so wonderful and her death because I was doing so much reading with her around the time that she died it really impacted me reading because all the books I was reading were books I was reading with her one of them was a book I was reading for her birthday because I wanted to buy it for her but I wanted to read it first to make sure it was okay and when she died for a few weeks I just couldn't touch a book and then I thought Alice would hate that so I started picking up books again uh, trying to pick up things that I would grip me but my concentration levels were really shot um, really found it difficult Alice isn't the only person I've lost this year this year this year has been a year of quite a lot of loss for me and grief uh, lots of people just you know it's been one of those years I won't go into it but uh, one was very recent and a big shock as well so all these things have been impacting my ability to concentrate on reading and yeah so that's one part of it prior to losing lots of people i was also pondering my kind of i was having a bit of an existential moment i suppose if you like i've read four thousand weeks last year by oliver berkman and i was sitting there thinking about all the times that i all the amount of reading i'm doing and why i'm not doing other things i'd planned to do with my time and a lot of it was to do with the amount of reading commitments i was making so i was planning on cutting back on those way back on those anyway and then when Alice passed away then sort of June, July, August I didn't really read a huge amount um, and I was, wasn't was taking part in any events I wasn't even filming videos for booktube and then I got back into booktube and I started saying you know getting back into some of the reading plans I'd had with really good friends of mine who I was supposed to buddy read with and uh, I did two buddy reads in September and October and with wonderful wonderful friends Dia from Novel Idea and Sandy from Miss Reads a lot and we did the most gentle of buddy reads and because I'm still struggling to concentrate too much concentrate a lot on books the books we picked I wasn't necessarily able to really concentrate on uh, because one of them I just felt like Sandy put her finger on it she's like I don't want to be in this world at the moment. Um, I won't go into it, but we were reading the last book in the Larry McMurtry Lonesome Dove Quartet, which we've been really enjoying and we've been reading together for a while, but we both were not in the mood for that world at that time, but we'd started the book and we thought we'll just keep going and we finished it. So I was doing that and it's kind of one of those things where you're like, oh, I don't really feel in the mood for this world. Um, and I've got limited reading time because I'm trying to also be very much more present in my life. I, when I was not reading and I was doing other things and I was beating myself up a bit about not reading and I thought, why am I doing that? Because it's okay to not read. <laughs> and so I've been becoming more and more okay with days where I don't feel like reading and I'm not gonna read. Uh, they used to be very, very rare for me. Was, in my entire life, since I learned to read, I've read most days, uh, most every day, apart from I don't even know when I've not read uh, at least a page or two but the past few months that's not been the case I've had days where I just do not feel like picking up a book which was worrying me as someone who loves reading so much and then I just thought no it's okay to not read and that's been something I've been giving my, myself permission to not read it's fine and not panic as if like I want to fall out of love with reading I just don't feel like reading now uh, Kim from middle of the book March did a really good video on this uh, recently and I knew about it because Gareth from Book Songs and Other Magic did a response. So I've watched both those videos and it's really funny because they're just chiming with how I'm feeling at the moment and what I've been thinking about. Um, Kim talked about all the other things and the reasons that we don't read. You know, we can be have really busy lives and my life is really busy at the moment with uh, family responsibilities, with work, with all sorts of things, but also with good things. I losing so many people this year has kind of made me really appreciate the life I have and the people that are in it and I want to be present for that and I want to spend time with those people and I want to 
think about some of the other goals I have in my life that I always think, oh, one day I'll do this. And I've really been struck by the idea that, that today is that one day. You can't be making plans for a future that, like you can make plans, of course, but try, you know, don't put things off for this future that you think is gonna happen because the present is what we have and you can't guarantee <laughs> like stop basically I'm trying to be kinder to myself my present self than I am to my future self um, which is something I read about in Oliver Burke's new book Meditations for Mortals where he talks about this idea of you know sometimes we're constantly trying to do things so that our future self has an easier time of it um, why not just be kind to our present self because our future self doesn't exist yet as yet and actually for a lot of my people in my life this year who unexpectedly passed away they didn't know they had this fu this future wasn't going to be that they weren't going to be there the following day or the following week so yeah it's, I've been having this whole existential moment and thinking about reading and the part it plays in my life and I uh, also was thinking about when I think about my reading you know I want to be picking up books because I want to read them I want to have books I want to be drawn to picking up my book so uh, all this is to say that <laughs> I've got a bit of a project for the end of the year that my aim for the end of this year is to just read books that I am drawn to picking up that I am gripped by and I'm going to stop reading books that I am not into um, and there's a bit of a caveat with this. Uh, I kind of wonder if I can have a, a winter of bookish excellence. And by that, I mean reading books that I'm just completely in, all in on this book. You know, a book that you pick up and within a chapter or two chapters, you're into the book, you're reading it, you're hooked. Um, and I'm not gonna talk about what I mean by excellent. Uh, it means different things to different people. What I'm looking for is books that enthrall me. And they don't have to be five star, perfect books because for me they are few and far between like the, those books those favorites that I will go back to and reread and just think about for a long time I'm hoping to find some of those but I'm not you know deluded enough to think that that's all I'm going to be reading for the next few months um yeah I just want to get back to that feeling you have when you've got a spare five minutes and instead of turning on the TV or ringing someone or looking at my phone, the first thing I would think about is my book. I want to get back to my book. So that's what I mean. I've kind of started it already um, and I've got a few um, things that I need to think about in order to do this. So lots of people out there will be sitting there thinking, that's how I read, that's mood reading. I just pick up what I'm in the mood for and if it's not chiming with me, I put it down and I pick up something else. And I used to read like that. Uh, being on booktube has kind of pulled me away a bit from that. And also, um, there are other reasons that I read. I don't just read for pleasure. I do a lot of reading for work. I read lots of um, the set texts and books that I recommend to my students. I will read those. And I'm not necessarily reading those for my pleasure. I'm reading those uh, to recommend them to children or to write um, sort of planning around them. So I'm not talking about that kind of reading at all. I'm also not talking about the kind of reading that I do for uh, following my interests, you know, some non-fiction reading that I do. I'm just talking about purely losing myself in a story, fiction reading, reading for pleasure, like the pure pleasure of reading. Um, and for some people that does mean reading non-fiction. For me, a lot of my pleasurable reading this year has been non-fiction. But when I was looking back at what I'd read this year, out of 50 books that I've finished, uh, not counting rereads, some of my favourite reading this year was rereading, but new books, out of all the books I've read, um, I think it was something like 16 books counted for me as books that I was just into and couldn't wait to pick up and wanted to finish, um, uh, like not wanted to finish, but couldn't put down. So yeah, I looked at those books and I was like 16 out of 50, that's not a huge return. I want a better return than that. So my aim for the rest of this year, to only read books that are making me want to read. So I want to get my reading mojo back. And in order to do that, I need to be reading books that I want to pick up more than not. So I'm looking to get my reading mojo back. And that means reading books that I'm drawn to and it, that enthrall me. So I'm going to be DNFing or DNFYing some books, like do not finish yet, because some books I might 
just go, yeah, this is good, but I'm not in the mood for this right now, so I'll DNF it for now. Some books I'll just DNF and not go back to. Um, but my mission towards the end for this year, uh, the rest of this year, for October, rest of October, November, December, is to just follow my nose, follow my mood, and make sure that what I'm reading is hooking me into it. So is this possible, do you think? Am I, yeah, I mean, most people out there who are mood readers are like, yeah, that's how I read. <laughs> and I do, for the most part, uh, recognize that this is a me problem, um, but it might chime with some of you out there. And I'm also going to be okay with not reading, but what I do want is, I've got limited time to read, so I want that reading to count and be special. I don't want it to be mediocre, I want it to be great reading. I want to have great reading experiences for the rest of the year. I want to find my spark, that joy and love of reading again uh, for me and just have fun, basically. Um, yeah, so in terms of the reasons that I read, there are I'm going to be reading things that I need to read for work, for research purposes, for planning purposes. So that will still be going on. And then what I'm talking about here is that just reading for fun. So, um, I don't know if this chimes with anybody, but I'm going to have my winter of bookish excellence and I will report back on it. I've already started it. One of the other things I thought about was how am I going to ensure that a book is going to be great for me? So I had a few ideas on that and that has led me to um, read and finish three books this week, which uh, may not sound a lot to a lot of people, but may sound like a huge amount to others. But for me, this past four months since we lost Alice, I've read three to four well, finished three to four books a month. And in this week I have finished three. One of them I picked up and couldn't put down. And it was my idea was, you know, I need to have reliable authors or books. So how could I do that? And I thought, gosh, there are a load of series I started that I was really enjoying. That is gonna be a great way of guaranteeing that I know the characters, I know the style, I know the, I know I'm enjoying it already. So great, I've already got loads of series to finish. So I picked up the last book in L.E.D. Harper's Wolf Den trilogy, which I loved. The whole trilogy was great, really enjoyed that. Um, and she's got a new book out next year now, which I'm, I'm pre-ordering. <laughs> it's going to be wonderful. Uh, then I picked up a Kidi, which is the L. McNichol follow-up to A Kind of Spark, which is a prequel. A Kind of Spark was one of my favorite middle grade books a few years ago, and I read Kidi in like a day, I loved it. Uh, so yeah, so that's my, uh, kind of strategy at the moment is going for um, trusted authors and series that I'm already in the middle of and that's quite nice because it means I get to finish some series hopefully by the end of the year. I was editing and I just realised that when I was doing that I didn't talk about the fact that this type of reading for me is not sustainable. Um, the reason it isn't is because I'm going to be DNFing books if they're not gripping me within a chapter or two and the risk of that is that I would miss out on some great reading experiences by not persevering with some books and I know that from experience because if I had a DNF'd uh, the Poisonwood Bible, if I had waited, if I hadn't given that a good, I think, gosh, it was about 100 and something pages before it really got going. Uh, Lonesome Dove, 200 pages, about 100 pages into Captain Crowley's Mandolin. And those three books, you know, when I was talking earlier in the video about books that are just, just special 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 books like the top top tier books that you read in your life that you just uh, when you finish you just breathless because they were so good those three books are like that for me and if I had DNF if I had been doing what I'm doing for the rest of this year which is not persevering because I'm not going to persevere I, I, I'm I'm done with it I'm, I'm literally going to first chapter if I like the voice the character voice I'm intrigued by the story and the writing great I'll carry on if in the first chapter I'm just like eh not bothered I'm putting it down but that doesn't that's not sustainable if you want to read great books because some great books take a little bit of time and then the payoff is just amazing so yeah um I just wanted to come in here and say that because it occurred to me just to say people are like oh maybe thinking oh that's how you should read all the time I don't advocate reading like the way that I'm planning on reading for the rest of this year I don't advocate doing that uh, all the time because you will inevitably miss out by not persevering with some books some books are worth 
persevering with and I've just named three right there which are just very very special very very special books that are a slow burn to start so yeah yeah that's the kind of I just wanted to pop in and say that because people might be thinking yeah that's how you should read all the time I'm not going to read like this all the time this is purely going to be I need stuff that's going to keep me reading and keep me hooked and I don't need something that's going to be a bit of mental energy I just don't have the mental energy or capacity at the moment and that's why this is different for me okay I think that was all I wanted to say I think that was all I wanted to say around it but I do want you to go and check out Kim's video about not reading. Also I want you to check out Kim's video around assigned reading because a big part of my being able to do this for the rest of the year is that I've decided I cannot really take part in any buddy or group reads or any social reading while this is going on because I can't do assigned reading um, and Kim talks about assigned reading on booktube I've always thought of it as that in a way even though it's really pleasurable for me the social reading aspects on booktube I love booktube um, events and buddy reads but I've got like I said limited attention limited reading for pleasure time and because it's so limited I can't have that taken up with what I think of as assigned reading which is reading with um, buddies and groups I love my social reading though it's enriched my life immensely but it also like I said I've got limited time so I need to follow my nose and uh, read what makes me happy at the moment um, and that might not be something that other people want to read and also when you're buddy reading you kind of have to stick within a few chapters of each other you have a schedule and I want to if I'm really enjoying a book I just want to go with it and I want to read further and read more and I don't want to have to sort of negotiate that with someone and it's not fair when you're buddy reading with someone to like race ahead of them or you know um, you can always DNF that people are really lovely when you buddy read with them and you can always DNF if you want but yeah so that's that's kind of my plan for the end of the year um, I know there's plenty of people out there who are sitting there thinking this is such a you problem but I just wanted to talk my thoughts out on here and let you know this is what I'm, th what I'm thinking I've, I've really struggled the past few months um, for the first time in my life with reading and I'm okay with not reading but reading such a pleasure to me and, I, and I've kind of lost that spark of really great books and it's not that I've lost my love of it I just think I'm not reading the right things so I need to regain that kind of like desire and urge to read basically I want that urge I don't have the urge to read at the moment I'm kind of not forcing myself to read but it's kind of just like a going through the motions thing and I'm trying to find something and find something that, that, that pulls me in and this week I've had that I've had that for the first time in absolutely ages by picking up Elodie Harper by picking up Keedy I've started Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir which I knew I would love and I've been pulled straight into it so that's my aim for the rest of this year uh, not a bad one um, a lot of people are thinking oh, just reading like a normal person Jack and to some extent you are right <laughs> but I do want to get back to my organized events and social reading but I want to get my mojo back first so uh, if you're still here <laughs> and you have any thoughts on this I'd love to hear them in the comments uh, go and check out Kim's videos go check out Gareth's videos actually I talked about different types of reading there's a great video by Brian over at bookish go and check out his video about that why we read um, my reading aims aside from my my sort of uh, research and work reading is purely going to be just for my own pleasure and enjoyment for the rest of the year so yeah go and check out Brian's video about reading and the reasons that we do it um, that was really good as well and uh, yeah if you've never been here before and you think oh gosh what a load of waffle and you don't fancy subscribing fine because I do tend to waffle on but if you liked it maybe think about subscribing check out some of my other videos where I ponder my existential thoughts around reading earlier this year I'll stick those in the description box too and hopefully I will see you again here soon bye